Good morning, grade eight. I hope you've got all a good night's rest. You will see today's topic, we're going to start with the general ledger. We're even going to continue tomorrow, still with this lesson about the general ledger. But before we start, let's do like Natalie have done, and let's just greet each other in the box. Before we're going to start, people, I just want to remind you there is still of the assessments that is outstanding. Some people didn't send it. So remember, you've got till the end of today to send the assessments for me, please, um, Monday and Tuesdays. And remember, you can either email it or WhatsApp to me. And there on the slideshow, again, there is my email address and my telephone number. Right, just again in the table of contents, you will see we're going to start with the topic, the general ledger. But before we're going to start that, let's look in the accounting cycle, um, because accounting is a cycle that you work through. And just if we can quickly go again through the cycle, um, then you will see the cycle is saying that every, um, or, or accounting is starting with transactions. And then you must write it into source documents. And then you need to do the journals that you have done so far, that combined activities. And then you need to do the general ledger. And that is what we are going to concentrate on for the next two days. And then we're going to do financial statements later on. And then there's still the analysis and the interpretation of financial statements. Um, so what we just want to see here is where in the process of the accounting cycle are we? So we have finished the journals and we're going to move now to the general ledger. Um, okay, people, I'm not sure what you're asking me there in the group, um, but you know, you know if you have sent off your assessment or not. Every time that somebody sent on other uh, you've sent you a message back to say I've received it or I've given you a shop if, if it was on WhatsApp. So you will know if, you, if I have received your assessment or not. So if you didn't get any reply from me, then you know I didn't receive it. Right, okay, but let's go on with the lesson of today. Don't worry too much about the picture that you see there. All right, this is just to give you a quick an idea of how the general ledger is going to look like. You will see in brackets here we talk about the T accounts as well. So you can take a very quick peek at the picture, but as I said, we are going to do it in detail. And then on the bottom part, then you will see there is something that looks like a T. Okay, so the general ledger accounts we're going to do, or sometimes we talk about the T accounts that we're going to do. Now you must listen clearly um, because. If you look at the T, right, then you will see there is something on the left hand side and something on the right hand side. Now, in accounting, we don't talk about the left hand side and the right hand side. Okay, so from now on, everything that are supposed to be written in on the left hand side, we're going to talk about the debit side. And you will see we're going to use the DT as the abbreviation for that. And everything that we write on the credit side. Uh, or uh, sorry, on the right hand side, we're going to talk about the credit side and we're going to use CT as the abbreviation for that. Um, okay, sorry, before I'm going on, I just want to answer um, the question in the chat box because I want to concentrate now on the lesson today. So I think there is somebody that might have missed writing the assessment. I'm not sure, um, but as I've told you last week, I was telling you the whole week about these assessments and that you need to attend. So if you have missed it, my friend, then, then it's up to you. Then you need to make a plan. 
um, because there was assessments on Monday and on Tuesday. So if you didn't attend those two days, then you have missed out on that. And that is important because the assessment is going to count for your report card. So then you need to get in contact with me, but not now in the lesson, please, um, because you should have attended the classes on Monday and Tuesday. All right, so then you need to get privately in contact with me. Um, as I said, my email address or my number was on the first slide. We need to continue with the lesson now. Right, so now we're back to the lesson with the general ledger, the T accounts. So on this slide, what is important to know? Either we're going to talk about general ledger accounts or sometimes about T accounts. So it's going to look like a T, how you're going to enter it. Everything on the left-hand side will be the debit side. Everything on the right-hand side, we're going to talk about the credit side. So for today, I will talk still about left and right and every time repeat it as debit and credit. But as I say, in accounting, we don't really talk about the left and the right-hand side, but only for today's set, so you can understand it. Now, what you see now there is the format of the general ledger. Now, look again. It looks like a T, and what is on the left-hand side written is also on the right-hand side written. So, the headings is the same. So, either you're going to enter things on the left-hand side, the debit side, or you're going to enter things on the right-hand side, the credit side. But let's just work through what the headings is going to be. Right, you will see there the first, it's basically two columns that will go towards your date. So you're going to write the date of your transaction in there. Um, I will show you on the next slide, it's important that you need to write it in the correct way. Then the next column is your details column. Um, so for instance, you're going to write a name of an account there. Then that next small column, you will see it saying FOL, it's standing for Folio column. Okay, you don't really use it in grade 8. If you're going to use it, then basically you're going to enter your journal that was involved in the like CRJ or CPJ. And then amount, of course, is going to be the amount of the transaction. So you can see on the debit side or on the credit side, it's the same columns, the same headings. Okay, so this is just the format, but remember, we just basically do today an introduction, and tomorrow we're more going to practice how you're going to write in these T accounts. Now, first, before I'm going to explain this, I'm going, I hope you have pen and paper ready, and I want you guys to copy, sorry, I hope you guys want to copy this for me on that piece of paper of you. So I'm going to give you about three, four minutes now. So you can first copy this page on a piece of paper just as I have done it. And then I will explain it because I can already tell you now what you see in front of you is going to be your little Bible page. You're going to need this for the rest of today, for tomorrow's lesson. And you're going to work the whole time on this thing. And this thing is going to help you so that the general ledger is not going to be so difficult. Right, so quickly copy this down on a piece of paper, and then I will talk to you guys in about three, four minutes time again. While you guys are still busy copying it, uh, my friend that didn't write the assessments, just look in the chat box 
Um, I have put there my email address and my cell phone number. So please get in contact with me regarding the assessment so we can figure out what we're going to do. All right. And also for those people that still need to send me my yesterday's assessment, also again, there's my details. Right, my friends, um, just please take your video away. I'm busy typing for you a message. Right, okay, I want to continue now. So what you guys see there in front of you is the following, okay? I'm going to start with the story saying, once upon a time, there was a lady and her name was Adelik. So we're going to talk about Lady Adelik. Right, now if we check, the A is standing for assets, the D for drawings, the E for expenses, the L for liabilities, the I for income and the C for capital. But if you take the first three, that means your assets, your drawings and your expenses, those three you're always going to write on the debit side of the general ledger or of the debit side of the T account. That means on the left hand side. If it's going to be a liability, an income or capital, then you're going to write it on the credit side or the right hand side of the T account or the general ledger. What is well important here is you need to know by now what is assets. So you need to know like vehicles, 
um, equipment, land and buildings, those things is falling on the assets. On the expenses, you need to know what is falling on the expenses, like telephone, water and electricity, wages, salaries, um, et cetera, stationery. Then with liabilities. Now, you don't really work in grade eight with liabilities, but at this stage, you can just remember it's going to be creditors and loans, okay? And then income, you need to know what's falling under the income. That's going to be like rent income, commission income, uh, services rendered, et cetera. And then, of course, the C for capital, there is only one capital account. Right. So I want you guys, when we go to the next slide here, to look at this piece of paper of you the whole time, because this is going to be very important. I want to continue to see, for example, I've used the capital account. Right, so what do you see there? Of course, the name of the account that you're busy with is going to stand at the top, like your capital account. Now, if you look at Lady Adelaide, on which side of the account must you do your entries? On the left-hand side or the right-hand side? So on the debit side or on the credit side? Now, if you look at Lady Adelia, the C for capital must be on the credit side. So there you can see um, in the example, the entries was made on the credit side, right? Um, the transaction is not standing there, but let me quickly uh, give you the transaction. So on the 30th of January, 2019, um, the owner invested capital of 10,000 rand. All right, I'm quickly going to say this again. On the 30th of January, 2019, the owner invested capital into the business of 10,000 rand. So with the date, you're going to write the date of the transaction in, that is going to be the 30th of January. Now, please people, look how you're going to enter the date, okay? There's no other way how you can write it. This is the only acceptable way. So you need to write the year in the first column and under the year, the month. And then in the next column, the day on which the transaction happened. All right, so check it again. First the year, then the month in the first column, and in the second column, the day on which the transaction happened. Then with details, you will see the word bank there. Now we will get to that also later uh, today, and to even tomorrow actually, but in the general ledger, you will see there's always going to be two accounts involved at the same time, okay? I'm always going to talk about the two friends because the one cannot be with the other one. So if you think for yourself, what happened here? The owner invested capital. So what is going to happen with the business bank account? The business bank account is going to increase, right? So what is the two friends that is been involved here. What the transaction is all about, capital, that's the one friend, and then bank is going to be the other friend. So in capital, you're going to write the friend's name in. That is now bank. So that is why there is standing bank with details. Then the next small folio column, you will see I didn't enter anything there because as I said previously, not really you're going to use it or if you're going to use it, you will write the journal for the transaction in there. So like the amount of the transaction was 10,000 rand. Okay, so then look at that slide so quickly, look at the entries. Uh, sorry, sorry, my mistake. I just want to go back to that one. Right, so before we're going to continue, again, when you're getting the general ledger, the T account to do, like in this case, it was capital, then you need to check according to Lady Adela on which side of the account you must enter it. Now, if it was capital, then it must be on the credit side. 
please again look at how the entry was made on the credit side. So first, it's going to be your date, exactly the way like you see it in front of you there. So it's going to be the year, the month, and the day on which the transaction happened. Then with details, again, it's that friend's name that you're going to write in there. Don't worry too much for now about the folio column, and then the amount is the amount of the transaction. Right, before we're going to continue, okay, um, let's have quickly a little, let's say, uh, a test here, but you test yourself, so I don't, you don't have to put the answers in the box, right, just, oh. so if you need to do, for instance, the drawings account, so look at Lady Adelaide, on what side of the drawings account must be the entry, check, it must be on the debit side. Right, let's say it was vehicles, okay? On which side are you going to write it into the T account? Now, what is vehicles? Vehicles is an asset, therefore debit side. Let's say it was a rent income account. On which side must you do the entries? Rent income is an income and income is falling on the credit side. Right, one more. Let's say it was on the debit side. Right, so we are going to have at the end, I will quickly put a little bit of game on and then I will ask, ask it again and then you can answer in the chat box. I just want you to get the idea. Um, Right, then let's continue. Right, there's more examples. So you need to look on your piece of paper now regarding Lady Adelaide. Let's take the first account there that you will see it's going to be vehicles. Okay, listen, I didn't put the transaction there, so listen quickly. The transaction will go like this. On the 30th of January, 2019, um, the business purchased a vehicle from ABC Motors for 50,000 Rand. So on the 30th of January 2019, the business purchased a vehicle from ABC Motors for 50,000 Rand. Right. Check according to Lady Adelaide on which side of the account must you enter it. So vehicles is what? Vehicles is an asset. Okay, I'm going back now so you can check. Look, the vehicles is an asset. Assets is falling on the debit side, so the left hand side. Okay, so there you will see the entries is on the debit side of vehicles. How are you going to enter it? First, your date exactly that way the year, the month, and the day on which the transaction happened, the 30th of January. With details, you're going to write the word bank. Why? Because remember, if you purchase a vehicle, what do you need to do? You need to pay for that vehicle. So your bank account of the business is going to be involved. So the two friends that is going to be together here, that's working together, is going to be vehicles and bank. Right? Nothing in the folio column, but let's say you should have written the journal in. So if you need, if you purchase something and you need to pay for it, which journal is involved? The CPJ. And the amount, all right, I've told you from the transaction, 50,000 Rand. Right, another example, telephone. Listen to the transaction. On the 30th of January, we pay Telcom the telephone bill of 500 Rand. Step one, you need to decide on which side of the account you're going to do the entries. So what is telephone? Telephone, and I'm going back, look also on your piece of paper. Telephone is an expense. Expenses must be on the debit side. Right, so there's the interest on the debit side of telephone. Please again look
5th of January 2019. With details, you're going to write bank because because you paid out of the business bank account. And right, I didn't put in with Twilio, but again, Five hundred rand. So I think so far you get the idea. Every time it will be the one friend will be what the transaction is all about, like vehicles, telephone, water, and electricity, rent income, etc. And then the other friend is always going to be bank. Okay, but this is only for now for this year. Okay, it's going to change later on, but you can remember it like that for now. Right, now I've put a different thing here for you guys. And that is again about the two friends that I want to talk. In accounting, you get the double entry principle. Okay, you're going to hear it a lot now. Now, what does the double entry principle in accounting means? Right, look at that first one. It is saying there, for every debit, there is a credit. So look, I put the two accounts next to each other. That is supposed to be the two friends. And what I'm telling you now is, if you made the entry on the debit side of the one friend, then the other friend must be credited. Okay, so for every debit, there is a credit. Or with the next one, for every credit, there is a debit. So look again, I put the two accounts next to each other. So that's going to be the two friends. Okay. And if, you, if you've made with the one account the entry on the credits, debit side. So that is what we call the double entry principle in accounting. So for every debit, there's a credit, look at the two accounts, or for every credit, there is a debit. Right. Basically, that's what we're going to do for today, but I want to recap first. Okay, and then we will quickly have that little game. Okay, so let's go back. For a start, Okay, we are set in the accounting cycle where we are now. We are with the general ledger after the journals. Then what is important, please, for today is that if you're going to do a general ledger account or a T account, then the, it looks like a T account and you have a left-hand side and a right-hand side, but we don't talk in accounting about that. We're going to talk about the debit side and the credit side and look at the abbreviations we're going to use for that. Then we also look at the format of the general ledger. So the, the same headings on the debit side you will get on the credit side. And what is that headings? That's going to be the date of the transaction happening with details you're going in with the small folio column. If you're going to write something in that will be your journal and then the amount will be the amount from the transaction. Then this very important, you're going to use it for the rest of your life. Okay, it's going to be Lady Adelic. So again, just notice what it stands for. A for assets, D for drawings, E for expenses, L for liabilities, I for income, C for capital. And then the first three assets, drawings and expenses is always going to be on the debit side of the T account world liabilities, income and capital will be on the credit side of your T account. But what is important, you need to know what is falling under assets, expenses, income, liabilities, etc. Right, then we have looked at an example like capital, for instance. So just again, look at Lady Adelic, which side of the account must you do the entry if it's a capital account, the credit side, and please look again how the entries was made, especially how you're going to write in the date. So the date was the date on which the transaction happened. 
with details at this stage, mostly you're going to write the word bank. So bank is going to be the French the whole time. And then the amount of the transaction. Right, there were some more examples. Like we've said, vehicles is an asset. Assets must be on the debit side. Telephone, telephone was an example of an expense. Expenses must be on the debit side. Every time the name of the account that you are busy with, what the transaction is all about, will be at the top. And then the friend's name that is at this stage, the whole time bank will be written inside the account with details. And then we have talked about the double entry principle in accounting. That is saying for every debit, there is a credit. So if you're going to enter something on the debit side, then you're going to enter it on the credit side of the friend. Or for every credit, there is a debit. So if you're going to do the entries on the credit side of the T account, then the friend will be on the debit side. I just want to see uh, what Lissetti said in the box. Man by the accounting cycle and journals, so where it says CPJ and CRJ. Okay, what is the DJ and the CJ next to it? That is more journals, but those two journals you are only going to do next year. Okay, so then you go a little bit step further, but don't stress about that for now. At this stage, you only know the CRJ and the CPJ. Right, I going to put, to help you guys, I will put this one back on for Lady Adelaide. And then let's see who's going to type the fastest now in the chat box for an answer. So here's my first one. On which side will we do a water and electricity bill? If you need to draw up a T account and it's water and electricity, which side will you do the entries? And okay, thank you, dear Lucidi, or um, same debit side. Okay, people, I just also want to say don't answer it now, left or right. Okay, then you are in trouble. You're going to tell me debit or credit. Okay, wonderful, guys. Right, next one. If it is a rent income account, which side? Rent income. Great, you see, you're typing fast. That is on the credit side because rent income is an income. Right, going, going, going. Next one, drawings. Drawings. Aha, uh -huh. here we got somebody now. Let's see, uh, 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 you second. So, right, this time we have a drawings. If you look at Lady Adelic, that's going to be on the debit side. If it's a land and buildings account, which side? Land and buildings. Right, what is land and buildings? Let's see again, you're correct there. Right, good. Okay, land and buildings is an asset, and assets must be on the debit side. Okay, let's try this one. If it's going to be a loans account, loans, which side? Aha, good. Right, loans is falling under liabilities, therefore it will be on the credit side. Um, let's make it capital. Capital. Right, capital, good. Capital will be on the credit side. Uh, let's do two or three more. Um, if it, okay, let's try this one. If it's a services rendered transaction. Services rendered. Right, services rendered, let's quickly talk about this one, is going to be on the credit side because it's going to fall under income. Okay, let's just recap what is services rendered. Think for yourself again, we are this plumbing business, right? We, we're going to uh, correct the pots and the taps or whatever the problem was for a client. 
what so we going to render a service to the client what is that client going to do he's going to pay us for our services so we're going to receive that money and if we received it the money is coming in so therefore it's going to be an income right uh right somebody's raising their hand if you got a question just put it in the box please okay well, I'm waiting for that question. You can just put your question in the box. Right. Um, let's say it is stationary that we purchase. Stationary. What side of the account? Right, good. Debit side, because stationary is an expense right um let's see last one if it is an equipment we purchase equipment so equipment which side so what is equipment right Okay, Lizanne, thank you. You right there. Okay, so equipment is an asset, and assets must be on the debit side. All right, great. I think you've started to get the idea, and I and I think you've noticed. What did you do every time? You looked at Lady Adelaide, and Lady Adelaide helped you to decide on who. Today. Um, I will look out for the next minute. If there's any questions about today's lesson, then you're more than welcome to ask your question in the box. But otherwise, as I said, we are done for today. Okay, Hakeem, you asking if there's another test coming up. Um, there is an informal assessment that's going to happen uh, for EMS, if I remember correctly now, the date is the 28th of July, but it's going to be very small, very easy. Um, it's not going to be like the assessments of the past two days. So it's not going to be long things, very short questions, but I will talk nearer to, to, to the time to you guys about that one. Okay. Right, any more questions? Okay, thank you very much, uh, thank you very much, guys, and I see you tomorrow. Goodbye.